that's right. Jack is back. He's going to take down all the beta cucks, all the haters, all the players. Take them all out. It's over, man. Jack is back. That's right, it's your man Z here, and I'm just here to bring you a fun story. Who knew after hiding in a cave in the Afghani desert that Jack Murphy would return to bring us all exciting news? <laughs> he brought us a novel. He's back. I don't know how this slipped on the radar. He's, I think he dropped this on, I guess, March 4th. <laughs> Nobody noticed. A couple, of, a couple of people noticed, especially the quartering. Always a big fan of Jack Murphy's. But uh, he's back at what he learned from the incident <laughs> and my past. Fascinating. Fascinating. If you like what we do here at Our Reviews Will Kill You, please like, subscribe, share the video. I'm going to bring in a little bit of fun, and maybe we'll even bring you a, a big interview about the liminal order. You'll see. We, we may have somebody important to talk about this. Anyway, if you don't recall, there was a big hubbub about a man named Jack Murphy, who is a, I guess, an influencer. He's the head of this thing called the Liminal Order, where he teaches you how to be a man. Yeah, be a man. So he's, you know, some. I think he refers to himself in this thing as an Alpha Giga Chad. That's that's like a thing. I don't even know what that is. But basically, he will, for a nominal fee hook you up with other manly men and, and they'll make their lives better now i don't disagree look you want to have a man's club and you want to like learn how to be better at what you do i it does, it's not that much different from jordan peterson or any of those other people so be wary of you know people peddling goods i let you choose who you want to listen to i have no problem if you want to follow jack murphy but i think this article re reveals some things and essentially what happened was he had an on-air meltdown when he was having an interview because somebody brought up his past. And in his past, he, uh, I guess, was doing some uh, sexy things with some sexy people. And he was making tips online for it. And all of that got exposed. He wrote a couple articles about some things. Sounds like the man had a midlife crisis and needed to uh, reevaluate his life a little bit. Maybe it took some dark turns that he's not so proud of because if he was proud of them, he wouldn't have got so mad. He told Sidney Watson to F off, uh, heartfelt F off. And uh, the rest is kind of history, kind of blew up. He went on the Tim Pool show afterwards and tried to defend himself, which me, which he just pulled the shovels out and dug a little bit of a deeper hole. So he's been gone for about three months now. So now he's back. Personally, I think it's a little bit too soon. Usually, if you just let these things slide and you come back out rebranded, a little bit different, show some humility, maybe people will forgive you. But in this circumstance, I guess, uh, you know, worse. <laughs> What's the old saying? Your actions are worth, worth more than a thousand words, one action. So people learned a little bit about him from one action. And uh, let's go through just some of the high points. He's back and looking for truth. And, of course, he's plugging his book, which is fine, I guess. He talks about being a liberal and then turning into a deplorable. So he says, three years ago, he did some things that he is no longer proud of. Things which disgust me today. For those of you who weren't aware of the videos, we, have, we did another video somewhere around here in the Ethernet. Uh, looking at some of the <laughs> images and reacting to them of him. So let's say things were inserted and maybe they came out and maybe they didn't. Maybe they got stuck up there. The fascinating thing is he's only upset about things he did three years ago. A lot of people went back to the cuck article where he was saying how he enjoys being a cuck. And that was like eight years ago. That was a long time ago. So maybe you didn't learn anything. I'm a little confused, my friend here. They were acceptable in the context of his belief system at the time. Do what you do, the, the difference is what you do in your own home, nobody cares about. But what you when you start asking for money for what you do, and then that conflicts with the morals that you're trying to teach in your little group here, those things are not uh, even. You cannot, the, the scales of life and balance do not balance out. You know, there, there's a cost to these things from a moral perspective. He says, I don't understand why consent is still required, but it's not enough. 
Consent is not enough to mediate society. What does, oh, I don't understand what that has to do with anything in this article here or the incident that he's talking about. Anyway, he again plugs something else of his where his YouTube channel where he had uh, opportunities to interview some of the greatest scholars, sp spiritualists, and political philosophers in the world. Okie doke. Did he learn anything from those from the last three years? I don't know because clearly he's still ashamed of what he did. He should, he should have just owned it, but I don't think he did. And I still don't know that he is because we'll get to one part in this that I think is, is um, kind of important. And he's trying to go through this. He's rattling off what masculinity is from Aristotle, Machiavelli, Hobbes, and Locke. Don't necessarily know that he knows what he's talking about, but that's okay. He can have his own interpretation because he says they're all things combined into one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some have made have said that me running the liminal order is the height of hypocrisy. They mistakenly believe that I continued to do these actions up to the very day my sins came to light. First of all, they're not sins. It's the sin is the hypocrisy, not the sin and the sin of hiding it. His sin was, you know, first of all, one of his sins was envy because he was envious of what his girlfriend was doing with another guy. Look, I'm not here to morally plead to you or, or the case. I'm just here to laugh because someone who doesn't seem to understand their own hypocrisy is someone who's going to struggle with the pursuits that are trying to influence people, it doesn't make any sense. It, the sins are that you weren't owning what you did. If you owned what you did and said, hey, look, I think I made some poor decisions in life at the ripe age of 40 something, like whatever, man, you do you, bro. But if you wanna come back and rebuild what you had, you have to come with honesty, right? My biggest mistake was not coming clean about my past. I should have so that it did not control me or threaten the work I do to help others. Because my past was re revealed, people believed I still did those things. That again is not the issue. I don't think anyone has an issue with that. That made me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. My anger is at their being revealed was really angry. Wait, my anger at their being revealed was really anger at myself for having believed as I did. I was ashamed. But in that moment, my anger turned outward at the people who revealed my sins when I felt I wasn't ready. I was wounded and wanted the pain to stop. You're playing the victim card, bro. You cannot play the victim card. You're never allowed to play the victim card unless you survive something absolutely horrific. And then you can turn victimhood into strength, but you're not doing that. People have called me, and this is also hubris here, my friend. That is also a sin. People have called me many things, hypocrite, grifter, FBI plant, Mossad agent, spying leader. First of all, don't think so much of yourself that you're a Mossad agent or FBI plant. I think most people just think of you as a poser. Here's the part that I struggle with. All of this is my responsibility. In refusing to own my past, I opened the door for the most hostile actors with the worst imaginings. So today I am owning my past. You're still blaming other people and playing the victim card. That is wrong. And I think I will have one thing that kind of irks me as we go further along here. Criticism has also fallen unfairly to my brothers in the limo. First of all, none of them should be associated. Like just because they followed you because you think you're an alpha giga chad doesn't make them foolish. They don't, I don't think any of them deserve to be mocked, which I think we'll hear from one of them perhaps. Um, he wants to address, if you want to address those men, address them separately. It's first of all, the Jack Murphy or the liminal order is not a Jack Murphy fan club. Except the website isn't the liminalorder.com, it's jackmurphylive.com. You should separate those two things, my man. And I'm sure these men had 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 uh, good value. Look, if you want to form a group where people have good values, no one's going to have a problem with that. <laughs> it has three core values. Masculinity, brotherhood, and sovereignty. None of which say Jack Murphy is God. That sentence should never come out of your mouth. Jack Murphy, that you know, you that you never should have written that sentence. That sentence is just inappropriate. You, I'm sure you guys do great things. 
They pay for funerals. They help families move out of violent zone. All sorts of great things. I'm sure you do. Don't ever, especially if as he goes on, he's going to claim Christianity. If that's another sin, taking thy Lord's name in vain, my friend. You have much learning to do, young Padawan. <laughs> as for myself, I know I'm not the perfect man, and I've ne never once said that Jack Murphy possesses perfect masculinity. Stop referring to yourself in the third person. I am not Jack Murphy, creator of masculinity. I am Jack Murphy, learning masculinity for myself and teaching others. If you want to learn masculinity, find your father. If you don't have a father, find an uncle, a brother, a grandfather, a mentor, a professor, somebody you can meet in person. They'll help you, I promise. I promise. So anyway, he keeps going on. Let's see. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here that I don't necessarily care about, but I do care a little bit. When he starts bringing up things like uh, New Testament stuff, and he went from slaughtering Christians to writing a huge chunk of the Bible. Um, yeah, you're gonna don't compare yourself to Paul. Right? <laughs> I just don't understand. What, don't bring up Joe Rogan either. Why you talk, keep Joe Rogan's name out of your mouth? Don't do that. You don't need to talk about Joe Joe Rogan. I just I just don't understand what this guy is doing here. He's just uh, like it's just so much victimhood in here. But he does ask for. Uh, let's see here. He's talking about Christianity. I guess he's converted to Christianity. Although I'm fairly certain that he's Jewish. Not that you can't do that, but uh, frankly, if anyone rejects the ability to be redeemed, they're rejecting Christian morality, but the American spirit as well. Dude, no one's saying you can't be redeemed. They're just saying you can't make money off the back of other people when you're not living the life you claim to, my friend. Please don't do that. Not good stuff. Not good at all. I am not a Giga Chad without need for redemption. I am a Giga Chad, bro. And I need some redemption. I just, this is uh, craziness. He, he needs an editor. This is not your best first foot forward. Uh, the Jack Murphy of three years ago is dead. The Jack Murphy of three months ago is dead. He is now a different Jack Murphy, a better Jack Murphy. One founded in virtue, masculinity, social responsibility. <laughs> Come on, man. Just do a video. Explain yourself. Explain what you did. Don't write all this down. Don't write this nonsense. Your thoughts are incoherent. and um, You need a little bit of work. You need to sort out the hypocrisy. Just take it all out. I know I went a little long on this one because I, I just think it's, it's amusing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our full-length live audio podcast. It is live streamed Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also check it out for free anytime. Download it anywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those great places. Catch us on Rumble. We're rumbling. We're rumbling and bumbling. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm sure more Jack Murphy stuff to continue. And um, we'll break it all down for you as it happens because it's amusing. Because... He needs to meet the noob noob, who's the anti-Giga Chad. He's the nega Chad. And from all of us here at Our Reviews, we'll kill you to all of y'all at home. We love y'all, but I'm on to the next one. Ah.